Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're gonna take a look at another improper integral. This one's a little bit trickier. Since it's not an improper integral of the first type, there's no infinity signs in your integral. So let's check why this is an improper integral of the second type. One thing you always wanna look for is with your function, let's call that f of x, which is one over the square root of x minus three, Always check what happens if you plug in the limits of your integral. You might find that there's something funny going on with one of them. Here, you can see when I plug in x equals 3, we get 1 over the square root of 0. So the function here, this is becoming undefined at this endpoint, 3, the left endpoint. All right, now to set this up properly, we do this the same way as the first type of improper integral. We take the part here, the lower limit, that's giving us the improper integral, and replace that number with a variable, we'll go with t. So we're gonna have a limit, and we're gonna address what type of limit perhaps a one-sided limit, but we'll get to that. And what we're taking the limit of is the integral t to four now. And we keep the function the same. All right, now at this level of calculus two, you'll be expected to set this up properly. And here, this is addressing a two-sided limit. We need to make sure that we have this defined properly. Let's go ahead and take a look at our original integral. Our values for x go from three to four. So I'm not gonna draw a sketch of the function. I'm just gonna draw a sketch of the interval, which is from three to four, very simple sketch basic number line from three to four. All right, now we're trying to let t approach three. t is somewhere between three and four right now. And you always have to remain within your interval here. So in order for us to have this defined properly, we have to have t approach three from the right side. We can't let t approach three from the left since that would bring us outside of our interval. So to set this up properly, we're gonna define this limit as t approaches three from the right side. The notation, you just put a little plus after the number that you're approaching to indicate the direction you're approaching from. All right, that is now set up properly. Now we can go to step one, evaluating the integral, and then we can plug all that in here and evaluate the limit as t approaches three from the right. So first step, let's evaluate that integral from t to four. One over the square root of x minus three. All right, at this point in your calculus two course, any and all integration methods are fair game. This one, we can handle with a straightforward u substitution. We'll choose u as x minus three. We'll calculate du, which is just dx. And I always like to change or convert the limits here when doing a u substitution. So a simple conversion chart, our original variable is x. Our limits are four and t and we're converting now to u limits just by plugging in. So if you plug in x as four, you get u as one. And if you plug in x as t, you get u as t minus three. All right, we can now convert everything in our integral from x's to u's. We have now an integral going from t minus three to one. of one over the square root of u du. All 
All right, you can rewrite the square root of u as a power. So we can rewrite that as u to the negative one half. Negative because the square root is in the denominator and the square root corresponds to the one half power. We can apply the basic power rule here. Looks like we add one to our exponent, we'll get positive one half. We divide by the new power, we're dividing by a half, same as multiplying by two. And then we evaluate that plugging in t minus three and one with the fundamental theorem of calculus. So if we go ahead and do that here, notice when I plug in my u value as one, we don't have to convert back to our original limits if you convert here like we did. So when we plug in one, you get one to the one half power, one to any power is one. So that's gonna work out nicely. But now when we subtract, we're gonna get t minus three to the one half power. And if it's easier, you can convert the one half power back to a square root and write this as two minus two times the square root of t minus three. And that is all the work for evaluating your integral here. So that is step one, evaluate the integral. And now you can take a limit. So we know this part, that's what we just found. So the integral evaluates to that two minus two times the square root of t minus three. We can plug that in and take a limit now as t approaches three from the right of that expression, two minus two times the square root of t minus three. All right, so recall some basic with limits. Ideally, you wanna try maybe plugging in. And if you plug in t equals three, the approaching from the right side doesn't affect plugging in. If you plug in t equals three, you get the square root of three minus three, square root of zero. This term is going to approach zero in the limit. The two here in the front, that has no t's on it, so that's gonna remain constant as t approaches three from the right. So we get as our limit here, which does exist, the limit exists and approaches two. So the fact that the limit exists, that tells us our improper integral is convergent. And more importantly, the value that we get for the limit, that's what the improper integral converges to. And there we go. So we have found that our improper integral of the second type is a convergent improper integral and it converges to two. Hopefully you enjoyed this short video on improper integrals, straight and to the point. If you're enjoying the content, support the channel, make sure to like and subscribe.